Okay, so let's get started. Just remember the examiner's advice that in the real exam you shouldn't be starting on the multiple choice. You should start on the main questions first. But we're okay. We're going to uh, ply on here anyway. Okay, so question one, they're looking for the scalar quantity. Well, displacement is definitely a vector. Force has a direction too. It's definitely a vector. Time is the one we're probably looking at. Velocity definitely is a vector. Time is the one that does not really have direction. Okay, a substance that can undergo a large plastic deformation without cracking can be described as, well, that's the definition, remember, of malleable. Okay, so that's really just bookwork of learning your definitions. Remember, malleable, uh, malleable comes from malleus, Latin for hammer. So this is something that can be hammered. And if you imagine hammering out a pot or whatever, um, using metal, flat metal, that's what malleable means. Bus is travelling at a speed of 9 meters per second. It then accelerates at a rate of 0 0.75 meters per second squared for a time of 8 seconds. What is its final speed? So V equals U plus AT. 9 was the um, initial speed. Uh, 0 0.75 is A. And the time taken for this change was 8 seconds. So we've got 9 plus 0 0.75 times 8. So that's 9 plus 6, which is 15. B. So which of the following is not an SI base quantity? Well, this is just straight book work. Length, mass, and time are. Force is the odd one out there. Force remembers mass times acceleration from Newton's second law. So it's a complex thing. It's not a simple thing in that sense. So in here we have three things that are definitely base units and one that definitely is not. This is our bookwork stuff. So we have a diagram here with some forces acting on a picture. So we've got several expressions one of which is the correct relationship. Well, crucially here, this picture is in equilibrium, so the vertical components of the two tensions will balance with the weight of the picture. So if we've got T acting at some angle theta, we want the vertical component of T. T breaks into a horizontal component like that and a vertical component like that. Now, if you remember the rule about Sokotoa, you'll realize that sine relates the opposite, which is this one, to the hypotenuse, which is this one. So the vertical part, or the vertical component of T, is going to be T sine theta. And both tensions contribute to the size of that. So the total will be 2t sine theta. And so that's what's balanced in W. So answer D is what we're looking for. Right then, a person weighing 100 newtons stands on some bathroom scales in a lift. If the scales show a reading of 110 newtons, which answer could describe the motion of the lift? Okay, well crucially, the reading on the scales is the value of the normal reaction from the floor on the person. Now, if there's a higher normal reaction, then that means that there's an upward direction to the acceleration because R is greater than R here is greater than mg because mg down we're told is 100 newtons because the person weighs 100 newtons that doesn't change the reaction of them 
the reaction of the left to the person, which is what shows up on the scales, is higher. So if I put some numbers on, you can see that there's a net upward force of 10 newtons. And Newton's second law um, tells us that the resultant force, which is this thing here, is equal to ma. So the resultant force is upward because a is upward. So the idea here is that we've got an upward acceleration. That doesn't mean we're moving upward, it just means the direction of our acceleration or resultant force is upward. So for a start there is an imbalance in force so we can rule out constant velocity and constant velocity. It comes down to these decelerating examples. Um, moving upwards and decelerating, well if it was upwards and decelerating that would mean that the acceleration was pointing downwards um, which this isn't the case moving downwards and decelerating that would make sense because um, if this object is moving down then to decelerate we would ne need a net upward force and that's what we are observing here we are observing an excess upward force of extra 10 newtons so that makes sense Question 7, a spring extends by 9 centimeters when a force of 6 newtons is applied. The limit of proportionality is not exceeded. Okay, now what this information tells us, if we look at these two numbers, is that 1 newton corresponds to 1.5 centimeters of extension for one of these springs. This is another identical spring is joined end to end with this spring and a force of 4 newtons is applied. Well, if there's one and a half centimeters for every newton, then four newtons is going to create uh, an extension of one and a half times four, which is six centimeters. The problem is that they are joined end to end. We're told here, and that means that both springs will feel a four newton force on them, so they will both extend by six centimeters, giving you a total extension of twelve. Okay, so which material here in this graph of stress over strain is uh, the material that has the greatest strength? Remember that strength is sort of generally referring to the ability of something to withstand stress before it breaks. And you can see that the highest stress values are achieved by A. So we could put down A as being the strongest of those materials. So which has the highest Young's modulus? Well again we can look, Young modulus is the ratio of the stress over strains, like the gradient of these graphs. Well the material with the highest gradient of the straight part is B, so it would have the highest Young's modulus. So strength is the ability to withstand stress and Young modulus is the gradient of the stress strain graph and the highest gradient here is B. Final multiple choice question. The acceleration of free fall on a particular planet is 8 meters per second squared. An object is dropped from a height and it hits the ground after 1.5 seconds. From what height is it dropped? So We've got g of 8 meters per second squared. We've got a time of 1.5 seconds for the fall. And we're being asked which one of these is the displacement. Now, crucially, um, we're going to realize that u here would equal nothing because it's going to, if something is dropped, then it's dropped from rest. It doesn't say that, but that would have to be true. It's not thrown, so it says it's dropped. So uh, we don't know V, so we need an equation that doesn't have V in it, but it has displacement and acceleration and time. Uh, U is known, so this will simplify to S equals nothing plus a half AT squared, or indeed a half GT squared. 
and I'm taking everything to be downward because everything happens in the downward direction. G is down, um, the displacement is down, so we may as well take down to be positive in our problem. And that simplifies it because you've just got a half times g times t squared. Um, so uh, one and a half squared is going to be like one and a half, one and a half. So it's like 1.5 plus 0.75 is like 2.25. And a half times a it's 4. So 4 2.25s is like 9. Okay. Answer B.